When they are being perceived as a victim and we who were attacked are being perceived as uh, the aggressor, that's flat out anti-Semitism. And I guess some people in the world uh, like us very weak uh, vi victims. Well, I don't want their sympathy. And I'm telling people and telling the world, don't ask us to stop this war because we're not going to stop the war until we secure Israel. Mr. Former Prime Minister, thank you so much for coming on the Rosenberg Report on TBN, the most watched Christian television network in the United States. Uh, the Christians understand what's happening, but I want you to give us a big picture strategic overview. First, you've compared this, uh, these attacks on October 7th to Yom Kippur. In what way? Well, we were taken by uh, surprise uh, and uh, on Yom Kippur, uh, of 50 years ago, almost to the date, we were taken by surprise by Egypt and uh, Syria. But this one is way worse because back then, during the Yom Kippur War, it was soldiers fighting soldiers. Mm -hmm. This was not a war. This was not an act of war. This was a pogrom, mm -hmm. a massive massacre, uh, primarily of babies, children, young boys and girls families, whole families that were burnt alive and murdered. Uh, so this is not war. This is a savage, uh, middle-aged murder and massacre. And this is precisely what we, as the Jewish state, are supposed to prevent. And that's what the war is about, about ensuring that this can never happen again. And the goal by Hamas is genocide, is it not? It is, uh, but to be fair, the state of Israel sort of ignored and didn't listen to what they were saying. The Hamas charter explicitly talks about the full annihilation of the Jewish state. That's in their charter. And over the past couple of decades, uh, we, because we're a nation of uh, optimism and life and, you know, just a wonderful- And growing uh, peace treaties and, all over. Yeah, right? so, so we, we sort of repressed the, the, the thoughts about Hamas, but we didn't realize that day after day, they were building a massive murder machine mm. uh, to kill babies, children, rape women, mm. uh, tear babies out of their stomachs. Mm. And, this was a huge awakening for us. We have a full-blown ISIS state on our border. Mm -hmm. And now all Israelis from the very left to the very right are united in dismantling this uh, state of uh, ISIS, denazifying it and cleaning it up so this can never again happen. So I want to talk, let's, let's go big picture for a moment. The world in many ways is turning against us. We had a week, 18, you know, maybe two weeks of, of sympathy. And now you've got the entire United Nations General Assembly condemning us, not condemning Hamas. You've got the UN Secretary General accusing us of war crimes. And you've got President Putin welcoming, or not in welcoming, inviting senior Iranian and Hamas officials to Moscow. What, what do you make of this? It's unbelievable. It's shocking. And for me, as an, uh, an Israeli that was born and raised here, you know, and we learned about uh, anti-Semitism of thousands of years, but we don't feel it on a daily basis. Suddenly, when the side that conducted the massacre, the side that tore babies away from their moms and killed them in front of their eyes. Burned them alive. Burned Put them, them in an oven. Burned them alive when they are being perceived as a victim and we who were attacked are being perceived as uh, the aggressor, that's flat out anti-Semitism. And I guess some people in the world uh, like us very weak uh, vi victims. Well, I don't want their sympathy. And I'm telling people and telling the world don't ask us to stop this war because we're not going to stop the war until we secure Israel. And if it takes weeks, so be it. If it takes years, so be it. And if it takes massive sacrifice on our behalf, so be it. We 
built this Jewish state. I served in the military. You served I, in combat. I served in combat in Lebanon, in Gaza, in Judea and Samaria. I fought Hezbollah, fought Hamas, lost my best friend, lost friends in order to secure the Jewish state. And make no mistake about us, our hearts are shattered, but our spirit is as strong as ever because the Jewish nation will win. You will know that the head of the UN and many others have said wars have rules. And forgive me if I uh, quote some of the Geneva Convention to you. Article 43, basic rule, the parties to the conflict shall confine their operations to the destruction or weakening of the military resources of the adversary and shall make a distinction between the civilian population and combatants and between civilian objects and military objectives. So I that's come exactly what we're doing. That's exactly why we are allowing the c civilians to evacuate before pounding them. We're doing but the it, opposite. It, it's not exactly what, what you're doing. No, uh, it's wait, not you, exactly asked, you asked the question. What, would you let me answer? Go ahead. What Hamas, ISIS did is they entered roughly 30 communities. Whenever they can, they butchered babies. They burnt them alive. They pulled a, a baby out of a pregnant mom's and, and then beheaded the baby beheaded the mom, they raped young girls. This is what we're dealing with. And with all due respect, I think that Geneva Conventions first and foremost tell a country, you need to defend yourself and we will defend ourselves. We're going out of our way. I know that uh, last week a hospital was uh, uh, fired by Islamic Jihad that, that fired a rocket on it and BBC said that it was Israel, but it wasn't Israel. And I understand that BBC has taken a side of uh, uh, on the Gazan side because all your questions are only about the Gazan civilians. That's not you true. You haven't asked one that's question. That's not you haven't true. asked one question I, I began about by those children. That, from the very beginning of this interview, from you the just very are asking me about them. Mr. But Bennett, it seems that, that is you not care true. little about our side. Oh, it is. Mr. What Bennett, I began, I, began, about our side? I began by talking about the hostages. And what I'm asking you about now is... No, I'm not talking about the hostages. I'm talking about the babies that were murdered. And you keep on caring only about one side, but that is the BBC way. But uh, let me let me tell you something. We're here protecting you. You're, we don't need your protection. And if you think there's a, a balance here between two equal sides, then you are lacking moral clarity. And BBC, I must say, is lacking moral clarity. I think of First uh, Samuel chapter 30, where David and his mighty men uh, come home, Ziklag, their, their city right on the Israeli-Gaza border, ironically. I'm not sure if it is ironic. I mean, it's just historic. Uh, burned to the ground, all of their families uh, taken hostage. They wept until they couldn't weep anymore, it says. They didn't have any strength. But it says, David strengthened himself in the Lord and then uh, asked the Lord, should I go pursue them? And they did. Of course, they won. They got everybody back. This is my prayer. But what does victory look like for Israel? Because if we win by defeating Hamas, that's good. But I was just reporting last week on the northern border and every Israeli I talked to uh, said, if you're just gonna leave us up here? What if, if we don't defeat and, and vanquish Hezbollah and probably the Iran nuclear program too, how do we say that we won? How, do, how is anyone gonna move back to the north or feel safe in Israel at all? I, so that's a lot, but I want your perspective of what does victory look like at this point? Well, there's the immediate victory and the long-term change that we have to effect here over the next few years. The immediate victor is total eradication of Hamas. That's what the prime minister said. Uh, either kill or expel the very last Hamasnik from Gaza. Gaza uh, can remain a, a state clean of even one weapon uh, permanently. And that's what we have to bring upon. And obviously the release of the 230 hostages. Amen. At a broader picture, uh, we have an Iranian octopus of terror whose head is in Tehran, sending its arms, uh, enveloping uh, Israel in Lebanon, in Gaza. And we're fighting one of its arms. Uh, as prime minister, I effected a new policy, which was to try and, and fend off the local arms, but really focus on the head of the octopus. Go for the jugular. Is Aaron. it time? What? Is it time to do that? I'm, I'm not going to give advice to the government right now. Uh, what I did, uh, and according to foreign 
sources, uh, whenever they try to hit us, bad people in Tehran uh, disappeared. And that's how we should be. We should be on the aggressive side, on the offensive, not waiting to be hit and reactive, but proactive of weakening that uh, terror octopus from its head and ultimately destroying it. Last question, and I appreciate your time, um, Mr. Former Prime Minister. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you. You have been out um, doing uh, uh, your uh, Miluim, your reserve service on CNN, uh, Sky News, BBC, uh, often having to say shame on you. They, 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 like they're, they're like v voices, mouthpieces for Hamas, for Iran. So thank you for that. But I want to final ask you, uh, what's your message to the Christian community? What, what can we do more to stand with Israel at a time of tremendous moral confusion in the world? But evangelicals are not confused. Our hearts are grieving. I'm, of course, an Israeli as well. But how can, we, how can I mobilize more people to stand with Israel? What, what, do, what does Israel need right now in your view? Well, start on a personal basis. I have four children, Yoni, Michal, Avigail, and uh, David, David. And uh, I'm intent on continuing raising them in a mm -hmm. secure Jewish state in the land of Israel. Mm -hmm. And having grandchildren and great-grandchildren <laughs> here in this powerful state of Israel. We're going to win the war, with or without uh, uh, the hypocrisy that we're seeing in Europe and other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. But knowing that we have a, a massive support from uh, America and uh, the, the American community uh, of believers, of people of faith, I'm a man of faith. Mm -hmm. It means the world to us. And here's my ask. Whenever someone speaks against Israel, even if you're on campus and it's not popular, mm -hmm. stand up and fight fight for good prevailing over evil, fight for life over death, an ideology of doing good versus an ideology of murder. And I can guarantee you that the Jewish state is here to stay. And I just want to thank the great people of the United States of America. Well, you're welcome. And I, I hope that the national leadership here will, will call for a national day of prayer. We're certainly mobilizing people to pray all over the world. Uh, I believe God is with us, but we definitely need um, people praying all over the world. Thank you, Mr. Former Prime we're, Minister. We're gonna, we, we need to help God by uh, uh, taking out the terrorists, killing as many of these evil people, because that's, that would be a blessing for the world. Uh, and for the region. Yeah, I, uh, in my service, I killed Hezbollah terrorists while securing my children. And right now, right now, literally, we're fighting evil, total evil. And th thank you for your support. I appreciate it very thank much. You. God bless you.